Hey everybody, I am Chris Baker from LuckyGunner.com and today I am going to review the new Beretta 80X Cheetah, a unique concealed carry option that's a fusion of old and new. I've run about 1200 rounds through this pistol over the last couple of months. We're gonna take a look at the basic specs and features and I'll tell you what I think of it so far. The Beretta 80X is an updated version of the classic 80 series Cheetah that was in production from the mid 1970s until just a few years ago. The new Cheetah is the same basic design as the original, but with a number of improvements and modern features. I'm a huge fan of the original Cheetah series. In particular, the old model 81 is among my all time favorite pistols. That's the double stack 32 ACP variant. The 80X is a double stack in 380 ACP, so it's more analogous to the old model 84. I have a video from a couple of years ago dedicated to the Cheetah series and its history in case you wanna learn more about the roots of the new 80X. Like the old version, the new Cheetah is a straight blowback or simple blowback operated pistol with a lightweight aluminum frame and a steel slide. It's a hammer fired double action, single action design with an ambidextrous frame mounted safety decocking lever. The double stack magazine holds 13 rounds. It's got a 3.9 inch barrel and a fully loaded weight of 28 ounces. The ADX that Beretta loaned us for this review is the special launch edition variant with a bronze frame and stainless barrel. The standard version is all black and Beretta has hinted at the possibility of other color variants in the future. This style of pistol is very much a vestige of the 20th century. It's compact, but large compared to modern 380 pistols. It's hammer fired with an all metal construction. It might seem dated, but that also comes with a they don't make them like they used to kind of quality. The Cheetah was originally designed as a sidearm for military and police, primarily in Europe, Asia, and South America. That means it's literally a duty grade pistol that just happens to be chambered for a smaller cartridge. In that respect, it's similar to other foreign surplus pistols like the Makarov or the CZ-83. The 80X combines that built to last legacy with modern features, which I will tell you about, starting now. The most obvious feature Beretta added that was not present on the old Cheetah is the accessory rail. They also added checkering to the front and back strap. They've recontoured the back strap to have a straight profile just like the Vertec grip variants from the 92 series. As the lawyer mark on the frame reminds us, the 80X will fire without a magazine. The later variants of the classic Cheetah do have a magazine disconnect safety. That's a fairly unpopular feature in today's commercial market, so it was probably a good move for Beretta to get rid of it. The iron sights were one of the weakest features of the old Cheetahs. They were just too small and the integral front sight could not be changed. The 80X now has a dovetail front sight, so you can swap it for another option when they become available. The slide is also optics ready. The optic cut comes from the factory with an integral rear sight plate installed. We were not able to get an optic adapter plate in time for the review, but as of now, Beretta does have plates for several different optic footprints available on their website. The factory iron sights are only marginally better than those on the old Cheetah. They're still on the small side with a basic three dot configuration. Of course, as always, I blacked out the rear dots and put some orange nail polish on the front sight to make it easier to track. Hopefully at some point, Beretta will offer some larger irons with a high visibility front sight. Beretta made some changes to the magazine design for the new ADX, supposedly to improve reliability with hollow point ammo. Some of the early press on the ADX said that it was not compatible with the old 84 magazines. That turns out not to be the case. We've been using four of the Metgar mags designed for the 84 interchangeably with the two mags that came with the ADX. I can't tell any difference without actually looking at them and they've all run without any issues. I would say they're good to go as long as you're using FMJ. In my opinion, the best change Beretta made to the ADX is the one you can't see the trigger pull. The original Cheetah has a pretty mediocre trigger. It's not bad. 
The double action is just a bit heavy. I don't know how exactly Beretta re-engineered the trigger for the ADX, but it's a massive improvement. The double action on this one is a smooth six and a half pounds. It fires from a half cock position, so there's a lot of slack here at the beginning of the trigger pull, and then a really nice short length of travel. The single action is a crisp four and a half pounds. It's a little on the heavy side, but good for a carry gun. The double action more than makes up for it. It's really one of the best triggers uh, from a factory gun that I've ever encountered. The action functions more or less the same as the later classic Cheetahs. To load the gun for carry, I would insert a mag, move the safety to the fire position so that the slide unlocks. Now rack it. So now the hammer is back and the uh, safety is off. Unlike the early 80 series pistols, the 80X cannot be carried cocked and locked. The safety feels kind of like it has a middle position here, but that actually doesn't do anything. Now I have seen on some other ADXs where it seems like the trigger is gonna be disabled when it's in that sort of halfway position. On my gun, I can actually still pull the trigger. And if we do the pencil test, you can see that the firing pin is not disabled when it's in this half safe position. So that's bad news. Not safe to carry the gun in that position. You need to push the safety all the way up that will decock it. The hammer is now in the half cock position and the trigger is disabled. You can carry it with the safety on or with the safety off if you have decocked it first. The safety comes off with a very positive and distinct click. For my hands, the safety is in an ideal position where I can just intuitively flip it down whenever I grip the gun. The decocker is a little stiff. I would like to be able to decock the gun with the knuckle of my thumb, but that's kind of awkward to do. I usually end up using the uh, thumb of my left hand to decock it when I'm at the range. Field stripping the ADX is pretty straightforward, but I want to show you one little quirk that can drive you crazy if you don't know about it, and I don't think it's mentioned in the owner's manual. To disassemble the gun, first, make sure it's not loaded, no magazine, chamber is empty. Then with the safety off, press and hold this little release button here on the left side of the frame. That will allow you to rotate the disassembly latch down and forward. Then the slide comes right off. The guide rod, the recoil spring, and the barrel come out of the slide like normal, and that's it. To reassemble, you put everything back in the slide exactly the way you found it, and then you put the slide back on the frame. And at this point, you're gonna pull it all the way back and engage the slide stop. Now you don't have to pull it all the way back for this part, but it's a lot easier to demo that way. So now you just have to put the, uh, the lever here back in its original position, but it doesn't wanna move even if I press the release button. What I have to do is press the lever forward just a little bit and hold it there. That will allow me to move the barrel back about a quarter inch. Now when I release the lever, it pops into its original position. Close the slide, decock, and you're done. Because of the accessory rail, the ADX will not fit in most holsters designed for the original Cheetah. And honestly, that's not really a big deal because it's almost impossible to find a decent holster for the classic Cheetahs anyway. Fortunately, Beretta already has some big name holster makers on board for the ADX. You should be able to find some of those soon, if not now. An old Cheetah might fit in a holster made for the ADX. My 81BB kind of fits in this ADX holster with a little wiggle room to spare. It might fit a little better if it was one of the uh, later F or FS models because they have the more squared off trigger guard similar to the ADX. This, by the way, is a pre-production sample of the ADX Enigma Express that Filster sent us. The finished version should be available very soon. If you're not familiar with the Enigma, it is a Kydex holster system with an integrated belt. I'm using the optional sport belt. It's a little wider than the original with some extra cushioning. I've also got uh, this aftermarket sleeve on here. It's called the Papoose from Levo Designs. I've said it before, but the Enigma is an absolute game changer for concealed carry. Uh, it might look kind of odd, but I promise this setup, uh, at least for me, is actually more comfortable than carrying a little tiny 12 ounce snub nose in a conventional belt holster. It works with 
or without a belt or whether my shirt is tucked or untucked. The ADX is blowback operated, which has some advantages and disadvantages. Almost all new semi-autos are locked breech or short recoil operated. That gives the shooter less felt recoil than blowback pistols, as we saw in the high speed footage in our last video. Straight blowback pistols have a very fast recoil impulse that tends to feel kind of snappy. The plus side is that blowback designs are often more reliable. 380 ACP just barely has enough pressure to operate a locked breech system. It tends to work okay in pocket pistols where the slide weighs basically nothing. When you move up to the slightly larger class of 380s like the Glock 42 or the P365 380, reliability is kind of borderline. Those pistols really depend on the shooter to have an ideal firm grip high up on the back strap in order to cycle completely. Of course, that has some implications for novice shooters and people with diminished grip strength. Even experienced shooters will often end up with an awkward or compromised grip on the pistol during the stress of an actual life-threatening situation. And that's exactly the kind of error that can cause a malfunction in a locked breech 380. The Cheetah's straight blowback design is generally much more forgiving. It doesn't really care how you grip it, it as long as the slide can move freely. It's an inherently reliable design for a gun of this size and caliber. There is a little recoil, but it's less than a similar size nine millimeter. The reliability of this ADX sample has been exemplary. I fired about uh, 12 or 1300 rounds through the Cheetah, including a couple of training classes. Almost all of that has been full metal jacket ammo. I've only experienced two stoppages, both failures to feed, which I'm gonna say were due to operator negligence. Blowback pistols tend to get dirty a lot faster than locked breech guns. Both times the gun malfunctioned, I had not cleaned it in at least 400 rounds. In both cases, the slide stopped with the cartridge partially in the chamber and then it closed after I tapped the bottom of the magazine. Just be sure to give it a quick cleaning every couple of hundred rounds or so and the ADX should run just fine. There are sure to be complaints that the new Cheetah is only a 380 and not a nine millimeter. That's just the nature of the design. Nine millimeter is simply not possible in a straight blowback gun this small. It would have to be a locked breech or some other system. And then it would be a completely different pistol that would have to be designed from the ground up. So 380 is what we've got. And really there's nothing wrong with that. This gun is easy to shoot reasonably well. And that's what really matters. 380 ammo does cost about 50% more than nine millimeter. So I understand if that gives you pause, but I would not lose sleep over the ballistics of 380. In terms of ammo selection, I would stick with Full Metal Jacket for carry. I know we had one or two 380 hollow points that performed okay in our gel test from a few years back. The penetration was still marginal at best. Even with the longer barrel in the Cheetah, you just can't get a 380 that both penetrates and expands like a true service cartridge. But penetration is more important by far and Full Metal Jacket 380 will do that just as well as 9x19. There are very few small concealable options for fans of double action, even fewer that are actually in current production with modern features. If you're looking for that Goldilocks balance of easy to shoot, easy to carry features and magazine and holster support, the Beretta 80X is hands down the best DASA out there for everyday carry, but the 80X is just begging to be more than just a carry gun. The trigger and the overall feel of this pistol can trick you into thinking that you're shooting a high performance gun that's made for beating all of your personal records. And that's actually why I've been a little frustrated with it. I've shot a lot of drills and tests with the ADX and I always feel like I'm really just on the edge of accomplishing some great feats of speed and marksmanship but a couple of things have been holding me back. First is the sights, which I mentioned earlier. They're too small. They're just too hard to see when you're going fast. But the bigger issue for me is the back strap. It does not fill my hand as well as that rounded back strap on the original Cheetah. I have trouble getting an optimal firing grip when I'm drawing it from the holster. 
I can't grip it as hard as I would like. There is more room for the gun to shift in my palm so I get more felt recoil. I'm really hoping that Beretta will release some of those wraparound grip panels that mimic the shape of the original Cheetah grip. And while I'm working on a wish list, I would also love to see conversion kits for 22 long rifle and 32 ACP with threaded barrels. The original Cheetah was chambered in both of those cartridges, so I don't feel like that's unreasonable to ask for. In any case, I am just happy that Beretta is giving some attention to the Cheetah to begin with. When they let the old Cheetah quietly slip out of their catalog a few years ago, I figured that was the last time we would ever see new Cheetahs. So the release of the 80X was a welcome surprise. This is probably not the last time you guys will see me with this gun. I'll try to keep you updated. In the meantime, don't forget to check the cabin air filter in your car. I bet that thing is disgusting. And of course, don't forget that you can always get your ammo from us with lightning fast shipping at luckygunner.com.